Hey guys, welcome back. Today is all about dark and moody food photography. So if that's what you're into, stick around because this is going to be a hot one. All right, in dark food photography, it's all about controlling and containing that light and only getting it where you want. Now, speaking of light, it doesn't matter what kind of light source you're using, whether you're using LEDs, strobes, off-camera flash, natural light, doesn't matter. This setup I'm going to show you will work for all of it. Now, I'm a studio shooter, so I use artificial light, and I'm going to show you my one light setup, which is easy peasy. Let's have a look at this set and go over some of the parts. All right, now looking at the setup, I'm using an old baking sheet as my surface to shoot on. It's got that nice texture and it goes really great with those Vietnamese peppers. I just love those peppers because they've got that wrinkly kind of uh, texture to their skin and it makes them look really good. And with the shadowing going on, they look awesome in dark food photography. Now, my basic setup here is a little house that I created to control the light. My light is off to this side here and it's spilling in this way but I only want it to go in certain areas. So by building this house, it stops the light bouncing around and I get to control it. So my peppers are set just behind this part of the wall. So there's only the front part peeking out, so the light is only spilling onto the front of it. Then this little dish here is hidden by this little section, but I have a window here. Let me show you this window up closer so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go, a little closer look of the setup. Now you can see I've got too much light spilling in on this area here. I only want it to come down in here and to catch the front part of those peppers. Now I have the window piece out. Let me put that window piece in and slide it slowly across and watch how the scene changes as I move that black card in and out. See how that light is just tapered right off. So by using that window, I can control where the light hits and the amount of light that's hitting, right? So I just want a bit of light coming in through here and to catch on the front part of these peppers. This part, I don't want super bright like that because it takes your attention away from the peppers. So I need to slide my card back in, use my high-tech piece of paper towel holder to uh, hold the black card, and you simply want to darken off the area where the peppers are. So when I turn the camera on this way, you can see my window here and how that's, see how the light's changing with that? So depending on my opening, smaller or bigger, I let more light in and out and not just more light in and out, but I'm letting light fall where I want it to. Now with the peppers, I don't want light on the back part here. That's why they're pushed back and half the peppers are cut off here. So this is blocking the light over here on the back side. So that's the closer look of that setup. So you can see how sliding that little uh, piece of foam core back and forth creates that window, allowing a little bit of light to peek in right where you need it to give that sweet pepper that kiss of light that it needs. Now, as I say, for the construction, this is basically just foam core that I built this out of. Now to hold all this little box together, I've got uh, carpenter's clamps. It's to hold two pieces of wood. If you're building like a picture frame or something and it clamps onto each corner, works brilliantly for this and they're cheap. You can get them at any of the hardware stores. So that's how I kind of built the house and I had to put a piece on top because I've got lower ceilings in here. Light was bouncing around and giving me a bit of fill light, especially in the back of the setup. And I didn't want that. Because like I say, dark food photography is all about controlling that light. Then with an off cut piece of foam core, that created my gapping here. I had to put the wall here because again, smaller home studio, light bounces around. So depending on where you are, you may have to box it or contain it however you can. You can do it like a teepee if you want with your food underneath because this doesn't show. This is the only thing that's in the photo is this section here. So you won't see it. And with mine, my background, I wanted to go black. Now, if I wanted a little light to spill in there, I could make this other wall just a touch shorter and just allow a hint of light on the back where maybe I've got another big baking sheet or uh, a very cool background that's a little lighter. So I get a hint of the background show up. 
And that's all done with controlling the light. And that's what this dark food photography is about, is controlling that light. Now I know it's kind of hard to see with my video lights going and everything, but I did show you closer up how that light came in and how you can control it. If you haven't tried dark food photography, give it a try. Dark and moody, I just love this type of photography. And some good subjects, as you saw, peppers. Cherries work really good. Bread works phenomenal. Anything with good texture. So it doesn't even have to be food. You could do product in there as well in the same setup and get the same kind of results. I prefer shooting with food. All right, if you have any questions or comments about the setup, please leave it in the description down below. I'll definitely get back to you. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. So until the next time.